Beast Swarm Simulator is one of the most notorious games on Roblox. With millions playing every day, naturally, competition at the top is impressive, because not many people can call themselves one of the best. Players only being able to get to that point after thousands of hours of gameplay, but those who have, have etched their place into Beast Swarm Simulator history, continuing to push a very high bar even higher than before, and it's all thanks to Hive Colors. First, we should establish what a hive color actually is. In the simplest form, a hive color is a hive built around maximizing the potential of a mask or an SSA passive for the benefit of pollen collection and honey making. There are four main types of hive colors, white, red, blue, and hybrid slash mixed. This being said, I think we're ready to hop right into it. Let's start at the beginning. To be honest, the traditional hive color wasn't a thing until the business of 2019, but there will still be hive builds before this. These early primitive hives were mostly made up of legendary bees, including some shy bees for red boost tokens, diamond bees for blue boost tokens, and of course, any event be available. These hives re relied primarily on bombs to collect their pollen. This was the build until one faithful day in 2018. More specifically, July 11th, when the Gifted Bee update was released to the joy of millions of people around the world. The reason why Gifted Bees were so important to the history of hive colors is that they truly added a reason to have anything other than legendary bees in your hive. The build now was all types of Gifted Bees for those special stat increases and then legendary bees anywhere you could fit them. Because of the release of Gifted Bees, many players were able to rise up the leaderboards quite quick making honey was much faster now. This would stay as the meta until the eventual release of Mythic Bees in the Beesmas of 2019. The Beesmas of 2019 introduced a series of the most important new mechanics into the game in the form of three different Mythic Bees. This was the true birth of hive colors like nothing we'd ever seen before, all thanks to these three bees. First, there was the Spicy Bee, which was primarily meant for red hives. It made flames, which also spawned in fire bees, and even converted lots of backtrack space. For the time being, at least. It was absolutely broken. Especially when paired with the demon mask, which spawned flames of its own. There was also the tadpole bee, which spawned in super cool and probably not cuddly frogs, because they have big eyes. These said frogs made bubbles because it was meant for blue hives, and blue bubbles are blue. And they also paired well with the diamond mask. Lastly, you have the Vector Bee, which summoned marks and made some pretty THICK triangles! Paired with the Carpenter Bee and the Gummy Mask, you had an unbeatable trio. For quite a long time, Red would stay the meta until it was eventually nerfed to only convert 1% of convert total rather than 1% of backpack space. This happened far after the damage was done though, and people sat with tens of trillions of honey back on top of the board. After red was heavily nerfed, lots of people started switching over to white, which was lots of carpenters, lots of vectors, and mainly focused on goo collection. This would stay the meta until the eventual release of the Supreme Star Amulets. These were special because they introduced 6 new passives into the game that completely revolutionized the idea of hive colors at whole. Before this point, hive colors were built around maximizing mask abilities, but now they were built around maximizing these passives, and the masks were just an add-on to these passives. As I said, there were six new passives. They were Gummy Star, Star Saw, Star Shower, Scorching Star, Pop Star, and Guiding Star. All six of these new passives were all incredibly useful in their own ways. First off, let's discuss how White Hives changed. After SSAs were released, White Hives became RNG hell. Why? Well, it's all thanks to Gummy Star. You see, if you had the Gummy Star passive, 
When you used gumdrops, there was a 2% chance for them to summon a gummy star each time, which was 1 in 50. When summoned, any goo collected in the next 45 seconds would be converted into honey tokens at the end. Plenty of vector bees would be run with this because of the triangulate's ability to collect large amounts of pollen at one time, adding tons of goo to the star. People generally ran this with star saw, another new passive that was intended for attacking, but had a secret second use. It would convert large amounts of pollen in the backpack into honey based on the attack total of your hive. Since microconverters were too slow for the vector bee's demands, the star saw was needed. White hives haven't changed much since the release of the SSA, other than the addition of a few fuzzy bees and a few precise bees when they were finally added into the game. White hives were the best for a little while, mostly when Beesmith wasn't around. The only thing really holding them back was the massive amounts of RNG that you needed to get around if you wanted to be white. Red Hives took ownership of the Scorching Star, a powerful passive that allowed the user to ascend to godlike levels of honey making. How it would work is if you had the passive, you would need to collect 30 red boost tokens to summon it for 45 seconds. During this time, standing in flames would increase many multipliers like Red Bomb. <laughs> That's so stupid. Red Hives would also take advantage of the Star Saw for the exact same reason White Hives would. The player Elaw was able to take Red Hives to a whole new level in the Beesmiths of 2020, making over 2 quadrillion honey in just a few weeks and wreaking havoc on the leaderboards. This was because of how much pollen Red could collect, so the, the combined with the festive bean which converted 100% of pollen into honey, it, it was just broken. The hive that changed the most at the release of the SSA passives was the blue hive. Before this update, backpack space was considered quite small by today's standards, and it really just wasn't great. Popstar would put an end to this pretty perilous pack to periwinkle paters. Pterodactyl! By collecting 30 blue palm tokens, Popstar would summon for 45 entire seconds. During this time, popping bubbles would add a brand new buff called Bubble Blow, which increased the conversion rate at the hive as well as the backpack space in the fields. Obviously, this will be paired with a bunch of tadpole bees to actually produce these bubbles in large amounts. This allowed for backpacks to get pretty darn big. During a short time after the release of these new star passives, Blue would dominate every leaderboard. This would cause Onnit, the game's developer, to nerf pop stars greatly, leaving Red and White to compete for the top spots, and for the pretty perilous Periwinkle Paters to come back for years to come. The final hive that I need to talk about for the SSA changes is the Mix Hive. After this point, Mix Hives ran a variety of passives. I know some people who run Scorch Pop, I know some people who run Guiding Shower, which is what I run, and some that run Guiding Saw, which is the best for boosting as a mixed Hive. Generally, people try to switch away from Mixed as fast as they can, so only the real ones that are into questing like Sugar Smacks stay as Mixed, because that's mostly what it's for. The release of SSAs has got to be the most important point in the history of any hive color, or just maybe even the game. Really up to that point, you could be a color, but it wouldn't mean anything as much as it did now. Even to this day, I'd say it's not even closely rivaled by any update that came after it. That doesn't mean it's the end of the history of hive colors though, not by far. The Beesmiths of 2021 would add three new tools, planters, and two new bees. Doesn't seem like that much, but these few things would make a colossal difference. Planters wouldn't change hive builds very, too, very much, but they allowed for each hive color to make more honey than ever before by offering loads of compounding buffs through the nectar that they produce. The two new bees probably changed the hives the most. The buoyant bee would buff blue hives altogether, completely, entirely, fully. It did this because of the special balloons that it made. The buoyant bee would first make a balloon token. Then the balloons would float over the field that the buoyant bee made the token in, storing pollen from the field and then go to the hive after they're either filled up or they ran out of time. You could then go convert these balloons afterwards at the hive and get tons of honey from them, and a balloon blessing which increased the honey you got from them, as well as capacity. Oh my, I'm so bad at writing. Now you see, balloons could hold different amounts of pollen, based on how big your backpack was, which is why they were so good for blue. The buoyant bee alone would make it possible to macro over 100 trillion honey a day. Yes, you heard that right. 
macro, which means not playing the game, over 100 trillion honey a day. This still hasn't been patched. Sure, it was nerfed pretty heavily near the beginning of Beesmus, but it wasn't nerfed enough, and you can still do this. STILL! The other new bee was the precise bee, which helped out Red Hive's taunts and White Hive's quite a bit. When you collect its purple eye thingy token, it would go above the field and make three targets on it. If you went through- SHUT UP THUNDER! If you went through all these targets, you'd get a precision stack, which increased super crit chance. If you only went through the one furthest from the bee, you'd spawn a precise mark, which connected to other marks and buffed super crit chance as well. The precise bee would also collect in the absolute butt ton of pollen when it fired its shots. This allowed for red hives to absolutely destroy it during their beesmus boosts, letting some people make over one quadrillion honey in one day. One quadrillion! Please note, Ices did do this as a blue hive as well. The three new tools added completely changed everything for red and white. The Gummy Baller was a tool for the White Hives that multiplied goo by tons and made Gummy Stars be able to be way bigger than before through this multiplier. And the Dark Scythe that was for Red Hives would make flames into Dark Flames which boosted a brand new stack called Super Crit, previously mentioned, which was just crit but more super. The final of the three tools was the Tide Popper. It would pop bubbles with its waves and award players with a new buff called Tide Blessing which boosted something, I don't know. White Hives wouldn't actually see too much change during the Beesmas of 2021. Other than the addition of a few precise bees in the hive, the build was basically identical. Although they would still make much more honey because of the gummy baller, unfortunately that didn't reduce the RNG required to be white, so not that many people ran it. As well as the fact that the gummy baller just costs a ton. Blue Hives probably changed the most in my opinion, as many top players became blue and flourished because of it. The addition of the Boimpy really changed everything up, and it allowed for macros to strive more than ever before. Red Hives also changed quite a bit, currently being the Hives with the most pollen collection, which makes them ideal for puffs and runs and boosting. With the added benefit of a high attack total, I think we'll start to see a lot of people switching to red not too long from now. Mixed Hives, as always, basically just took the new features of the update and shoved them into their Hives. And uh, that's, that's where the history ends for now. I have no doubt that the meta will keep switching around as Onyx continues to build his features in the game. If you made it this far and liked the video, then smash that like button, break your screen, uh, get your mom mad at you, and then get disowned. See ya.